This is breaking news from Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Several breaking developments tonight in the coronavirus outbreak. The first, a major announcement from President Trump. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. It will definitely lead to a huge number of infections. All restaurants had to either shut down. This is the worst public health crisis for a generation. 2020. It held all the promise of any other new year. New Year's resolutions of health, happiness and foam abounded. But in a very short week, everything changed. A wild disease broke out in China that had never been seen before. An incredibly high infection rate gripped the world with fear as it spread to every corner of the globe. The situation had gone white hot. You know, we really feel like the pandemic has caused us to lose a lot of time together. In America, there was a little bit of time where we weren't able to see, especially my parents or my grandparents. And when we came here, we were expecting to go home back to the United States at least once a year. Uh, while we've been here, we have not been able to leave the country. Uh, we barely even leave Guangzhou. To ask the late generation, COVID has been without a doubt the crisis that affected our life the most. As an aspect of human history though, it was not the first at all. The pandemics we see today were the product of the conflicts between mankind and disease for thousands of years. While diseases became progressively more deadly, humanity's defenses and counter-strikes had also been developing with the advancement of our ideologies and technologies. With that said, we need to go back to the early Middle Ages, when one of the first global pandemics hits the human population. During the mid-13th century in Europe and Asia, a plague had arrived in Europe when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. People who get this disease were mostly dead, and those still alive were gravely ill and covered in black boil that oozed blood and pus. Sicilian authorities hastily ordered the fleet of death ships out of the harbour, but it was too late. Over the next five years, the Black Death would kill more than 20 million people in Europe, almost one third of the continent's population. People thought that it spread based on the fleas of rats uh, that came from China on boats, is what they often said. So the summer before the plague broke out in certain places, there were um, issues with, with water and sewage and human waste and things like that. But I think there was still quite a bit of, of fear of God and religion that was involved in it. You know, we know a lot more information now, but back then medical knowledge was very low. And a lot of times they thought that the disease came from bad smells. We now know that this plague is caused by a type of bacterium that parasitic on mice. But since people in the Middle Ages does not promote scientific reasoning, the cause of Black Plague was thought to be punishment from the god, and was spread through bad odors. To fight against the bad smell, a special type of suit was developed for the doctors. They had a weird looking bird beak mask that has herbs filled in the points. Surprisingly, but yet not so surprising, they contribute a little bit to the suppress of disease but the truth behind the terrifying disease still remained to discover. The actual turning point of the pandemic defense in the history was no doubt the scientific enlightenment in the 18th century. It was the first time people tried to value a phenomena based on scientific proving instead by random intuition. Under such atmosphere, the mysterious essence of disease was finally revealed for the first time. We get things called diseases and disorders. A disease is normally something which you can catch. So by spreading a pathogen, uh, a disease causing organism, and then you get something which is called a disorder, which is normally uh, something that you're born with or that your genes will change and make you get. So for example, when someone is Down syndrome, this we call a disorder because it's in their DNA to be that way. Whereas if someone catches the flu or a cold or something like that, uh, this is not necessarily a disorder because it's actually a disease. 
What came with discovering the basic disease mechanism was more efficient ways to stop the pandemic from spreading. Such measures include sanitizing, quarantine, and the wearing of masks. In the 19th century, famous scientist Louis Pasteur had to develop a way to disinfect food or objects with a short period of high temperature. This method was used worldwide as the renowned pasteurization. Although the concept of quarantine was long developed throughout history, it wasn't to this period that its value was paid attention to. So far, the human population was once again ready for any potential crisis to occur, and they didn't wait long. In the 19th and 20th century, there are three main viruses that hits human beings the most. Smallpox is a serious infectious disease caused by a viral virus that has an unclear existence. The mummies of Egypt, written description from 4th century China, and written notes from 7th century India and 10th century Asia Minor, suggest that smallpox has existed for at least 3,000 years. Since the virus that causes smallpox is contagious and spread through person-to-person -person contact, and saliva droplets in an infected person's breath. Historians found the connection between the global spread of smallpox to the growth of civilizations, exploration, and trade routes expansion. The second major virus is malaria. It is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites transmitted to people through the bites of infected female Anopheles mosquitoes that existed in ancient times. This virus occurs in a 2700 BCE Chinese document, plate tablets from 2000 BCE Mesopotamia, 1570 BCE Egyptian papyri, and Hindu texts as far back as the 6th century. Even though the experts have developed preventive approaches, such as distributing mosquito nets treated with insecticides as covered during sleep. People still risk becoming infected during waking hours. What's more, cholera is a bacterial disease that spreads through contaminated water and first existed in India in 1817. In an epidemic, the source of the contamination is usually the feces of an infected person that contaminates water or food. It can spread rapidly in areas with inadequate sewage and drinking water treatment. The symptoms of cholera are severe diarrhea and dehydration. Hence, with poor treatment, cholera can be fatal within hours. We can live without fearing death nowadays, thanks to a significant invention in medication, the vaccine. The first vaccine was done and performed and made by Edward Jenner, and it was for smallpox. He basically took, I think it was a nine-year-old boy, and he sourced someone who had smallpox. He removed the path pathogen and he uh, made it weak. We call this an attenuated vaccine nowadays. And then he put this into a syringe and injected this weak form of the virus into this little boy. And although the boy still got smallpox, he got it to a much less harmful strain. And so even though he had the disease, it was a less harmful strain, and thus he was able to survive. And I think he was the first one to get a vaccine. Besides the infamous COVID virus, there are a couple of other pandemics that happened in the 21st century. Something worth noticing was the seasonal influenza, which can affect the patient's nose throats, and lungs. What is special about it is its fast reproduction rate, which means that mutation happens frequently. Thus, it was easier for it to develop immunity to some medicines in a relatively short time. Another major pandemic was the SARS, similar to COVID, which was a respiratory disease caused by a type of coronavirus. Such disease may spread by simply physical contact or sneezing. Well, with any disease that is highly uh, transmissive, you know, the way you're going to get it is by coming into contact with other people. So because the pandemic that we're dealing with at the moment has uh, an airborne factor, we need to make sure 
that we stay away from people to, to reduce the chance of transmitting. Quarantining helps to keep you away from people during what we call a window period. A window period is when the virus is not necessarily uh, picked up or you can't see the symptoms, but you are still highly contagious at that time. So often this is when viruses are spread. Once someone is sick, they normally stay at home by themselves. And so they stop uh, the spread of the virus by doing this. But because we have uh, this window period where you don't actually show symptoms or you're asymptomatic, this, this causes people to still interact with each other. And so they transmit this disease without actually knowing about it. Only once they feel sick, then they stay home. But by then the damage is done. Compared to before, the pandemic we had today was undeniably way more deadly. The increase in urbanization had made the population more exposed to the potential threat and provided an extremely haste network for the disease to spread. In comparison, the normal flu that any of us may catch now was already so deadly to people five centuries before that it could simply wipe out an entire town. But thanks to our understanding of the pathogens, many disease was able to be extinguished before going severe. For those extremely dangerous viruses such as COVID or SARS, facilities can maintain the death rate to the minimum. We may think that the defense system we have now is already ideal, but the fact is that we are not even close to absolute security. As we mentioned before, the quick mutation of pathogens is causing more and more prescriptions to become invalid. It was estimated that within this century, most antibiotics will completely lose their functions. Even so, we are not out of hope. New technologies in the future may provide us with better solutions in the future. Many of them, such as genetic engineering and nanorobots, are on the way around the world. Indeed, humans have come a long way to this point and experienced countless interactions with pandemics. As disease invasion goes larger, our counter-strike also developed with it. And so the human population developed with this non-stopping conflict. If it weren't for the COVID, we might never have needed to know this much in our lifetimes. But we had to realize that everything we had now will not exist without those pandemic prevention developments. They are like an invisible shield that granted a fragile yet glorious human civilization.